big. Everyone loves a winning team. With Patrick Thistle's resurgence on the pitch, hospitality is busier than ever. Changed days when 20 or 30 guests would rattle about the club before a match. 200 people are packed in for today's game against Falkirk. Wealthy patrons, businessmen and corporate guests are wined and dined, as well as being entertained. Uh, may I offer to you now my own personal welcome to the Patrick Thistle boardroom. Uh, around this table here, uh, big, big decisions are made. Millions of pounds for new players. <laughs> or shall we fix the kettle up in the staff room? <laughs> This is young Stuart, all right lads? Right, shoot the hands. He loves the goalkeeper, who's the goalkeeper? Gary Bratton, easy. That's a hand Big Dennis. Look at this boy, he's got a... Look at that, he's got a seat for him, bad John. All the best lads. And that's your sit month supporter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Patrick Thistle are not expected to do great things, you see, and they're very, very unpredictable. Start of season, Patrick Thistle won the Bernian 5. Following Wednesday, Celtic 2, Patrick Thistle 5. Now that's better. <laughs> okay, here's the What's team it? anyway. Yeah. Bud, Kelly, Fleming, Cregan, Parson, Dees, Cameron, Lennon, McLean, Hardy and Burns. Walker 12, Gow 13, Dolan 14, Archibald 15 and Britain 16. Now he's needing fucking tickets. With seven games to go, Patek Thistle are top of the league. But their recent displays have been poor, taking only two points from a possible 12. Today's match against the struggling Falkirk side is an opportunity to rediscover their best form in a very evenly matched and unpredictable league. Manager John Lambie is keen to point out the dangers from the opposition. The big boy Mullard Craig, he's not a bad player for a lad, he's a good player. He's got to be watched. He's very strong. Yeah. I don't know if Danny's still, you're on 200 pound a man for this, but I'll win the day. Guys, yeah, if you're telling you, you quick up, fuck it, pack up. Come on then, eh? Hey. Right about that. Come on, make the weekend a good weekend. Oh, come on. What the fuck are you getting? Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Fucking get the game, we want everybody. Come on. Come on. One goal lead at half time and the team dominating is little comfort for the manager who is all too aware of the flaws in his own team's play. Then it is, it's not what they've created. We have any hand that they've got half chances, we've gave them it. She's going to just come back and shake like The big thing is that when we're getting it, we're no positive enough, we're no crisp enough. I'm telling you, we could, we've got to go for the fucking kill. When we've got possession, the one thing we've got in our mind is to put the ball in the back of their net. When we lose it, the one thing in your mind is we don't lose a goal. That's it, we work. Right for the front, defending starts for the front two. If we're under pressure, my strikers are doing it right, put the ball into one of the wide areas. And they should be there or there'll be questions fucking asked. <laughs> There's just one or two final balls, you know, we could have fucking really stuck it into them because you know yourself, goal difference can fucking count at the end of the day. It could be worth a fucking point to you. The main thing is that we didn't look like losing anything, maybe once, again with stupidity. But we needed this one, lads. We needed this one to get us back in the rail.
Very tense. I think that we're all apprehensive before the game because really we've all for Ailes a wee bit in the last three or four league games. We've let the standards slip a wee bit and we're a wee bit apprehensive because we thought maybe the cup tie next, next week against the Rangers was playing in their mind. But we've got the result today. It's magnificent. The whole place is buzzing again and hopefully that will set us up now to go the, the final push for promotion. Well, as I can say, lads, it's brilliant to get back on a winning wave of with a few setbacks, and I think the cups caused a wee bit of it. But in saying that, the day we showed a wee bit more appetite, and uh, I, I think the, the scoreline really should have been a wee bit more because we created a lot of good chances, and especially the second half, two or three that could have been squared for tap-ins. Um, it's always going to be a difficult game with teams fighting for their life, but I must hand it to my boys. We asked them for that wee bit extra the day, and, and they produced it. I'm absolutely delighted because we can we can go to Blackpool uh, tomorrow. And the boys will be right up there as high as a kite. Uh, brilliant for them because you know when you're a fair and happy, you go beat the day, you're going to Blackpool and the heads are down about, but now they'll, they'll be buzzing down there. An unexpected run in the Scottish Cup has earned Thistle a semi final match against Rangers at Hamden. Lacking the finances to jet off to sunnier climbs to prepare, Thistle make do with Blackpool. Cheaper than the continent, it's worked well for the management in the past. We've been coming here for about 17 years, and it probably all started back to the time we beat the Rangers in 1987. We'd went a couple of years prior to that, but 1987, we beat them one nothing in the Scottish Cup at Ibrox with Hamilton Ackies, and it's been good for us ever since. So we always come here for a wee relaxation, preparation for big games, and they don't come any bigger than this Sunday with Rangers again. Day, well, day the, wee, the wee movement one, near post runs and that, can not you? Not strenuous, do you? No, we'll do, we'll do right. the passing, aye. And then you can put them onto that aye. one, and then we'll do the wee pattern they play, aye. the dead ball line getting across. Aye. And tell the, tell, the, tell the two directors to get the balls back quick, Jerry. Okay then, right. <laughs> the balls go astray, guys, you've got to get the balls. <laughs> Keep the balls coming quick and fast when you're asked. Some of the players would laugh the way I speak to directors, but I'm just, I'm just, they're just like balls to me. Honestly, I mean, I've had no problem with... I mean, not one iota of problem if I came here. But it's a funny thing. I mean, me classes are right here. I'm scared of them and I don't give a shit what I say to player, to, to, to players or directors. That, that's my way. That's probably how I am where I am, because a lot of directors, oh, Christ, I couldn't work with American. But it's the very opposite. I've had brilliant relationships with children. It is what it is. What you see is what you get. There's no... Deviousness, or you know, there's no hidden agenda. He's got a problem. It comes to me with his problem, and I do. Why? So we don't have any. You know, other other managers and chairmen have problems that they're, uh -huh. they're, they're they're going in different directions. They're they're not working together. And I think that's a problem with a few clubs. Guys, get that fucking bun off! Who can hear that fucking ball? Come on, hear me, man. No, no. Hear the ball, is it? Position yourself. That's it. Position yourself as if it's going to come in short, the near post, and then come here. We did get the Cup semi-final, you know, we haven't done that for a while. Uh, 1979 and 78 before that, but it'd be good. Uh -huh. Good payday, because you've got to look at the finances too nowadays. And, you know, we're budgeted and breaking even, and this Cup semi-final is going to be extra, so that's going to be a profit and it'll help us with the, a lot of big ground developments we've had to do. We've to spend a lot, we've got a new stand, but apart from that, we've just spent over £100,000 in the existing main stand, so a lot of outlay, so it's been a real bonus. <laughs> Uh, really, this is where the build up and that starts to begin. Once you get older boys and yeah. once that bus starts up, that's when the when we'll all be taking it in and that's when we'll start the Really getting up for it. Elsewhere in Glasgow, pre match nerves before Thistle's biggest game in years are not a problem. Oh, 
I've always wanted Thistle to get back to a cup semi-final for the last, what, 23 years. And it was one of the things that I was a bit annoyed about when we were four years in the Premier League. I really felt at that point we were going to do it, and we didn't. We twice lost in penalties in quarter-finals, and you know, here we've managed it as a, as a first division side. It's been a fabulous season for us. I mean, we're top of the league in a, a cup semi at Hamden against Strangers. It doesn't get a lot better, unless we win today. <laughs> A brave attempt of trying to cause another Scottish Cup upset. It's failed, but uh, what's your thoughts on the 90 minutes? Well, I, I can be semi-proud of the boys, to be honest with you, but when you're playing Glasgow Rangers, the one thing you've got to keep is concentration right out through the 90 minutes. And we lost concentration in vital areas of the park, and it cost us three goals, and that was a disappointing thing for me. Well, that's all the best, promotion. All right. That's the most important thing. The actors done in Bible, what are they? Yeah, good talk. Yeah. And they didn't do the too bad. No, they did not. Yeah. Couple of chances in the first half, made a change again. Just tell them to, to right, right, yeah. good, right good chances. But I mean, yeah. if, if you don't take them against teams like Rangers, you've got to take them. But you saw that we had, we had two shots of goals the first half and we scored one of them. I know. And then the, the, what the second goal is the second one of the first shot of goals. That was, that was my, I was raging at the second uh -huh. But I mean, that's it. Once the second goal went in, John, it was fine. It's over, right? Forever cast in the shadow of Glasgow's footballing giants, success on the pitch is far from guaranteed. Thistle supporters have to be resilient and must endure a more extreme range of emotions. It's been an adventure, OK. I, um, <coughs> it's got its ups and downs, isn't it? It's mostly for, being a, most Thistle mostly. fans will say lots of downs, but when you get the highs, Aye. it's a special that. games where you, everybody who was at it will always remember it for years and years. Right at the time, the first year we were back in the Premier League yeah. and we beat Celtic at Parkhead. Fair enough, you're not winning the league or anything like that, but games like that, you always, always sticks in your memory, winning at Ibrox. For me, maybe not so much for the younger guys, but for winning at Ibrox, the season we get relegated, in 1982 or something like that, but just going there and stuffing it right up them was absolutely brilliant, you know, it was great, you know. We did things like that, the promotions that we've had, uh, with, with Lambie have been Aye. brilliant, you know. Dundee United but game at Tannadice. The nightmares have been... <coughs> so we've had some real stickers. And you have a law, you've got a view, yeah. A real law. Take it down into the second division, <coughs> which is a nightmare. Absolutely. Then you learn to the third. One point away from the third division, you know. Yeah. But you stick with them. It was the loyalty and determination of the club's hardcore support that witnessed a remarkable turnaround in the fortunes of Patrick Thistle during its darkest hours five years ago. Well, in 1997, round about October and November, it was fairly well known the club was in financial difficulty. And then just at the beginning of November, it became public that the club was around £3 million in debt and heading for liquidation. So what we did was we set up a campaign called Save the Jags, in which we asked the supporters to get together and raise money to help pay the players' wages until the end of the season or until some sort of rescue plan could be put together uh, to keep the club going on a longer-term basis. With a boardroom restructure required, New directors entered the fray and brought their collective expertise to bear on the club's perilous finances. I had, this, uh, through my professional life and experience in insolvency and, and dealing with companies with financial difficulty, and Brown was obviously very experienced in the running of the football club because he'd previously been a director of Partick Thistle. We agreed that uh, we would both come in together and that I would deal with the creditors and that Brown would deal with the running of the football club. What was the biggest amount that we were indebted in the last few years. I mean, that would say that the, that the amount of indebtedness is 850k at the end of Double the season. The, no, it was more than that. The, the, in November 1997, the indebtedness was three million pounds. And total, but the bank was 1.7. The bank was 1.7 of that. Right. But it was, it was but three, we, got, we as a club now. owed three million effectively. Uh, uh, and now it's 850. Projected to be with a new, with stand. A new stand. And a new stand. And the main yeah. stand. I think the only way to survive is through financial strength. 
You know, I think people who chase rainbows uh, end up lost in the clouds. We're not chasing rainbows. Uh, fortunately for us, we've actually found a couple in the past couple of years, uh, but that's a bonus. The one thing we won't do is put the financial health of the club at risk to try and find the rainbows. I can deal with the team losing games. What I, I couldn't cope with is the club losing money again. I wouldn't be able to deal with that stress. But uh, if you ask me honestly, uh, the last piece in the jigsaw was John Lambie. John Lambie seems to have the skill to produce a winning team on the budgets provided by the board. And that's really all the board can ask from from a manager. I, mean, I think he's vastly underrated and I think we're very lucky to have him here. Tempted out of retirement, John Lambie's return to Thistle was his third time in charge. But he faced a massive task to reverse the fortunes of the club and create a winning team from the players available. Uh, I came into the training and I looked at the situation in training for a couple of days and oh, God, I, might, I could have put a balaclava over my head, what I was seeing. Phone Big Jerry, wasn't he, was. And I says to Jerry, this is this job, I say, this, this is unbelievable. We wouldn't be lucky to stay in the second division, I'll tell you that right here now. Oh, he says, don't be stupid, you'll do it. I said, I'm telling you, that's it. This team's in, in a sh complete shambles. I remember John got the job the last time there, and he phoned me up and he said to me, if you thought we'd a big job when we came initially, the job we've got now is, if we do this job, it's a miracle. An absolute miracle, because the players we've got is unbelievable. The players that we've got here shouldn't be at the club. Party officials should have better players than that. There's been a lot of mismanagement over the years. But gradually we've come back in and gradually you get yourself back onto a level where you, you can stabilise the club, then you try and get better players in. Just what I said before about getting players in that you know can do a turn. Right, Danny, tuck in! Right, hold it. Aye, but you wouldn't have been fine, you had a fuck you. And I just did you one right up the fucking cobblestone. There's no fucking danger. The main thing when I came back here, I thought, was uh, to bring smiles about the place. I know it's difficult when it's dead, but when I walked in here, it was dead. You take it for me. John Lambie, I think, for all his bluster and all the rest of it, he's, he's a very, very good man-manager. He makes I think he's... ordinary guys play better. Play above themselves, I, I think. He's made the team believe in themselves, you know, that they can mm. actually do this, you know. I think it gets them that kind of way. You can make half-decent guys play yeah, to like a level it. above them, what we would think right. they can do. With five games to go, Thistle are six points ahead of their nearest rivals, Airdrie. However, off the pitch, the real possibility of promotion has caused problems for the board. Urgent work is required to modernise the ground to meet the standards laid down by the Premier League. If they don't meet them, they cannot be promoted. The deadlines are looming, and the work is proving expensive. What the real problem, if I had to do things, if it to work weekends, if it to work, bring guys out at night and work overnight with premium rates, which has really annoyed me intensely, but there's not a lot we can do about it. We're meeting a deadline that really doesn't matter, to be honest with you. Uh, the deadline's the 31st of March, but that's the SPL deal, so we've got to go for it. It's possibly, it's possibly cost us 20 or 30 thousand pounds having to accelerate the work. What happens if somebody refuses to give their letter tomorrow? We don't get the, uh, the certificate and we don't play in the Premier League. Black and white. Fairly. Thistle's match against Clyde at Broadwood is an opportunity for the team to stretch their lead at the top of the table. Second place Airdrie lost 4-1 to Ross County the previous night. However, this season, Thistle have struggled against their old-time Glasgow rivals. But in the dressing room, there's no room for negative thoughts. What a fucking chance you've got, guys. What a chance. Well, let's be up for it. Start the game right, everybody, come on! Can't ask for any more than 100%, that's all we can ask. Give us it. Don't get them one minute in the ball. Pressure them. Don't allow crosses to come in. Don't be standing back and allowing them to put crosses in for big gear, get the far post. Give us it. 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 Give us Jesus! Oh, 
nice wall ball, Jerry. Easy! Just you fucking put the ball here! Just for the fucking boy! And the hole! That's a wall ball! Fucking diabolical! And my bike feels fucking stuff, it's shit, Jerry! I know, I know. How did we start the fucking game? Shit! Correct! But the big thing about it is, the, the way we've started the game was diabolical. I always say, the way you start the game, it fucking sets you up for the rest of the game. My back three started fucking slack as fuck. Kenny, you've had fucking three balls. You fucking punch three balls when it's there. For fuck's sake, we're lost. Up front, we're fucking lost. We've got fuck all. Nothing I can talk about. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, pick yourselves up, come you on. the fucking stage. Sit there and get it through your fucking come heads, on. that's what it is. Mentally, get yourselves prepared mentally. That's the most important thing. Hey, Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Hey, bro! Come on, bro! Well, we're in the park, boys, right? What? That, lads, I'll tell you something. At the end of the day, we've worked our balls off all fucking year. We come to places that fucking wins you fucking championships, and what do we fucking do? Eh? What do we fucking do? Too many fucking players that just want to fucking dawdle a fucking boot and no put any fucking hang into the fucking game. We're the best team in the fucking world to get away fucking goals. Ah, boys, 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 boys. I'll fucking tell you. But I'll tell you what, hang for fucking five weeks to fucking go, I don't know. And people going out there, no fucking busting fucking guts, I'm telling you. I can stand any of it, I can't stand fucking that. That's just, they were up for the game, and we weren't. That's it. I kick every ball with these players. Uh, that's my style. Some people will maybe just sit and watch the game or they fold their arms managers, but I've got to be involved. And the doctor says it's maybe a good thing because I'm letting everything go out. And he says that could be a good thing in my part, where other people are just sitting there taking it, draining, taking it on, no emotions or that. But it's just the way I am, everybody's different. Big Jerry's a wee bit the same as me. Jump up and do them balling like a loony. It's your style and we don't change that. But you feel for your players and you kick every ball with them. You're shouting at them, you're balling at them. Oh, some of the things is unbelievable. If you get beaten, even though a big match, you know, it's him a bad mood. Ask me, I'm up the road, I'm. That's, it ruins my weekend, it really does, you know. If we win. Sometimes you're drunk, but you've got the road. <laughs> I'm driving my sorrows, fair enough, I'm driving my sorrows, and then I've got the road, you know, with some heat, but. <laughs> the kebab king. The kebab king, right? right. right. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't anymore. Uh, I, do, I, 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 take, I, I used to. I used to, when I was younger, I used to, but now I've. What, I think once you get a bit older. Um, I'd say probably because I'm still it's, younger. It's no. As much as you really wanted to me when you really wanted to do well, but you can back to the wife and the, and the kids and all that. You know, it's not the end of the world that Fisher could be. You know, I take it. You know, happy about it, but it's not the end of the world because you'll be back next year. You know, you know you'll be back the folding weekend anyway. It's not as if you're giving it up. 
So, and the amount of times we've seen Fistle get beat over the years, if you were going to get <laughs> upset all the time, you mean the cardiac ward at the Western, you know what I mean? <laughs> It was the final meeting of the safety team as you know we've got to get this 10,000 seater certificate by the end of uh, March and with the 31st of March falling on Easter Sunday it's made things a bit more difficult for us but it's this Thursday the 28th of March, the meeting's going ahead today at 2 o'clock and hopefully we'll get the, the green light and everything will be going, we'll have the certificate in about an hour and a half's time. It involves the new stand that we've got over there where we've got 1,414 seats so that's, the, that, that's I think relatively straightforward. Uh, and we've also got the main stand, we've had to spend over £100,000 in the main stand, mainly in fire prevention works, new fire doors, uh, underdrawing, putting in new one-hour petitions and such like. Quite a lot of work, all the steels had to be clad, so a lot of work. You know, I think in total we're spending something like about £650,000 to, to bring the ground up to SPL requirements. The financial implications of success are becoming a heavy burden on the club. Former Division One champions Falkirk were denied promotion because of the state of their ground. A lot is riding on this inspection. It's been a success, yes. We've got a safety certificate for 13,079 people, of whom 10,294 are seated and 2,775 are standing. So we've got it at last, we're three days ahead of schedule. You know, I've done my bit, it's now over to John Lambie. <laughs> That one's, I don't know who's easier. Is this your territory? This is, uh, nobody gets in here. None of the players get in here. As soon as you get in here, you know it's boys and all that got away, you know? So the players don't get in at all. Don't get beyond that door of players. This is all the struts are well. It's all the first team struts. So what's it like working here? Well, we've been on the volunteers, you know. Uh, ah, it's okay, you know what I mean? That's okay, I used, used to run for a team for years, but that's the first time me and Chief could be involved this side yet. You seem to get on well with the players though. Ah, the players are brand new ones, you know. We've never had any problem with any players. So. They're all down to earth, you know, they're them big time Charlies, we shouldn't let them know anyway. Do you think that's because of the manager? Oh, he keeps them their toes already high. Gaffer's fair with them. Today's game will be tough for Thistle. Ross County are in fine form and remain unbeaten in the last ten games including a comprehensive victory over second place Airdrie. However, Thistle will have to improve on their miserable display against Clyde. The new stand is open and the ground is fit for the Premier League. But is the team up to the same standards? Fuck me! This game we're fucking no blame for fucking claps! Fucking all in he's in. Fucking don't understand, have you? He's near a day. Fucking unbelievable. We see the conditions, it's doing the right hand side day. All we need to do is get the ball floated in for that right hand side and fucking squeeze the fucking game and pick up the crumbs outside the box. There's times, lads, there's times in that goal move for a wee bit. Everybody's, wait a minute, everybody's standing still. See when the ball goes into that area? Fucking go and anticipate picking up some crumbs. We're just standing. They're near life. You pick up crumbs with a wee bit of movement. Sometimes you've got to gamble. No, just stand. You've got to gamble. Somebody, something. you've got to gamble to go in there or where. Just move, gamble, and then the second one comes in. Go, 
A goal behind, the team rally at the expense of silky football, but begin to show some of the spirit that has seen the team thrive this season. Chance. Thanks a lot. I think it was a reasonable day for us. It, maybe we wanted to win, but we got a draw and Airdrie lost. So it does mean that, you know, if we do win next week, we can win the league. So that would be a, a fabulous result. So it wasn't a bad day all overall. So well done to the players for that. First of all, we have our two men of the match. The first one is our main sponsor, the DH Morris Group, and they've given their man of the match is Alec Burns, and I think Laura's going to come and present this. When we've played well. I think we have been the best team. I don't think there's much argument that we have been the best team in the league when we've played well. When we've played badly, when we've, played badly we've, we've had some <laughs> some stinkers type of thing. But in saying that, we can't, we've got nothing to complain about because we, we weren't expecting this at all. As Graham said, we were expecting, if you're, if you're just on top of the relegation well. issue, that's great for us. We were not expecting to be top of the league and challenging literally for the beginning of the season. The last training session before the Airdrie game is tense. The club are ahead in the league, and second place Airdrie seem to be throwing away every opportunity to catch them. It's a huge game for the club. Well, the big thing about it is if we win tomorrow, we're up in the SPL, and uh, considering the situation of the club three and a half years ago, that's an absolute miracle if that happens. We're going to win the game, get it into your heads. Whatever happens at quarter to five, bingo. But at fucking three o'clock, we start this game to win the fucking game. They'll be up for this, and it's up to you to be up for it. And I've got all the fucking confidence in the world. You've got yourself this far, it's up to you to take it the stage further. It's important that we actually don't get beaten in the game, although I would never say that to the players. I've been positive, you've heard me talking to the players, I've been positive about it and told them there's only one thing that we want is a victory tomorrow. You know that most of the, most of the games, the last 11 games, we've lost most of the goals bar for one in dead ball situations, whether it be free kicks, corner kicks, doesn't matter what it is, even long throws, we've lost goals for fucking dead ball situations, it's an absolute fucking joke. It's because they are mentally picking up second balls. We don't pick up fuck all against Clyde, it was diabolical. Fucking people just running us all fucking ball watching. And that, this is their strength. Airdrie's strength is dead ball situations. Even throw-ins for the boy Armstrong. When I went to my bed on Saturday night and Sunday morning, I was waking up every hour. And you wouldn't believe it, I was just thinking about the Airdrie game, which is all wrong. It's gone through my mind and the wife says I was kicking the blankets, I was heating the pulleys and what have you. But that, that's me, that, that's what happened. It shouldn't happen, but it does happen. It just shows you how important this game could be to the club in a big, big way. And to John Lambie and to the players. OK. <laughs> What's important is we go out here tomorrow and just Totally work until work your socks off until you're on your knees virtually. As long as we go and work for 90 minutes, I don't think we'll be far away. The rivalry between Thistle and Airdrie is not only a battle for promotion. Among some sections of the fans, feelings run much deeper. What about the Airdrie rivalry? They hate us, we hate them, basically, you know. Aye, it's coming earth, really are. It's, it is, it the is it, they always start. Lightly. A group of supporters, they call themselves the Section B. Uh, and I don't know if it was a sort of hooligan sort of thing or whatever it was, but they were very 
the East has done this TKO signs and, and then Thank God to the Queen and all that sort you of thing. You always see the Union Jack side and all that. There's just Ranger supporters in disguise. There's Ranger supporters that kind of get there. And this was 15, 20 years ago. And they've not changed. They're still the same guys. There was a, they were up at I brought a couple of weeks ago. There's still guys done with the Union Jacks and all that sort of thing. Aye. They still do the same thing. No other supporters. There's, not, it's only, there's a group of them. Don't know how big they are, many there is them. But they've always been that way. They're about 15 yeah. of them. They say they're smaller, but there's about 15 of them. If you're still a game, if you're watching a, a football game and you see some guy standing down in the Nazi salute. No, what's that about? No, that about a Scottish football game? Standing down at CKO. Kyle. No, that just, to me, he's a scumbag. Uh, and if you see it every time you ever played him, then you just think that, cl that club is full right. of scumbags. The fucking first throw! Jerry, come on! The fucking! Jerry, keep your moose on, let them get on with It's a lot of fucking piss, big fucking pars coming up, you're on the fucking ball there. If he comes up there, then you just do that and get the fucking ball and we're away. He did. He did. What? He had to hit the fucking bar! He put timing on it. He put timing on it. What? He told me come and do that. He moved for it. He come and roll it to me 10 yards to move them. He just had a shot. He just had a shot. Martin, see that one you had and you had a fucking whack at it? See if you were only and just fucking doing it with pace, you'd have been fucking on and top of them. You fucking let it go, you stopped, you looked up. Just go at them. Fucking big James can't he run, he'll be fucked. He's fucked in there. He has. He's got a big we have got to win this game, come on, get it in your brains. We've not been in the game. We've not been in the game. Once again, the team come back from a goal behind, but a draw is not enough to win the championship. After the match, Lambie is quick to praise his team's fighting spirit. That's the main thing, we battle, but we should have fucking won the fucking game. I wanted to finish. You done well today, big man. I'll give you fuck, I'll give credit where it's fucking due. You gave us a shift and that's all we fucking asked for. Don't ask for name here. What are your balls off? And you're still no fucking fat, as you can be. But you're getting a wee bit better every week. It's not broken, is it? No, no, no. Look, you said it was broken. Never said it was broke. Jerry, did he say it was a broken ankle? Correct. It was a broken ankle. Oh, you fucking ass. Jerry, I can assure you to you. Jerry, I'll tell you on fucking. I'll tell you something, I'll bet you a fucking thousand pounds. Well, you better pay me the fucking new. I'm telling you. Yeah, broken ankle. Broke ankle. They want that broken 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 ankle. That's what I say. So get your money out. Why? They did. Why? I never said broken ankle. Broken ankle, the same thing. 
the fucking game that we fucking dominated and couldn't fucking put it to rest. Let me fucking give other players a fucking chance. And... This is my way of relaxing, you know. Get your mind away from football and all different things. But the main thing is, I don't keep them for the funny, I keep them to win. I'm not in it for second prizes, but I mean, uh, it's like everyone else, and other people got other ideas. And I'm quite right, it's a competitive business. Are you just competitive by nature? Yes, oh, I'm very competitive, and I expect them to be competitive. Too. If they don't tow the line, then they're, they're in that bucket. Do they respond better than players sometimes? No, they don't talk back, that's how they respond. Better than players are, that's how I come in among them. They don't talk back to you, the wife's had to talk back to you. That's my relaxation. If they say anything, just hit them with this bonnet, I've got my head. Know your, you've got to know your pigeons. The same as you've got to know your players. Uh, you know your players to get the best out of them. The one thing that I would say with pigeons and, and, and footballers is they need motivated to win. And a player has got to be motivated, whether it's self-motivation or whatever it may be, they've got to be motivated. Motivation and harmony have been key elements in Thistle's success. But if the team win promotion, there will be little loyalty shown to the players who haven't the skills to make the jump to the Premier League. I don't think loyalty comes into it. I mean, the players get paid for doing their job. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very strict decision and, as I say, loyalty doesn't come into this. It's got to be that no. I've got to improve my team. No, 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 no! He's doing a coaching exercise, it's fucking wrong! They've got to go there, Batman's got to go You've with the You've got to be ruthless at times in this game. Uh, you can't be a kind of, kind of guy in this game, you know, especially on the manager's side. Senior pros can't understand. These players are experienced players, they know what to expect. It's the kids that come through maybe on YTS that's been at the club for two or three years and you feel that they're maybe a bit just short of what we're looking for to get the pro form to go into the, your first team squad. And they're the ones that hurt you when you've got to let them go because sometimes there's tears involved and it's, it's really not a nice thing. Expectations are high for the match against St Mirren, but two defeats and a draw in their last three games is hardly championship form. A win today against a team that are struggling on and off the pitch would clinch promotion and crown a season far beyond the club's wildest expectations. You're giving them a bit of balance and Flea on the left hand side is trying to get in the back. Coming from the other side, Flea will give the balance and you've got to get the guy. Yes. Let's see what your men are here today. Let's see if your fucking men or women are here today. Because it's men that will win it. Say the same thing every week, guys. If it's avoidable, no silly free kicks or corners. Stay up. Don't play to their advantage. Well, we've got throw hands, get movement quick. If somebody can play the ball quick, then move. Get the ball moved. Don't wait till everybody's fucking in other positions. Come on, come on. Danny. Hey, another hand. Another hand. We keep our mouth shut out there. We'll the referee, referee the game. Nothing stupid. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut, everybody. Give us a shift, guys. Come on. One by you're the best, son. Give us a shift, you. Don't sleep. The best big arch. Give us a shift, you. Just give us a fucking shift. That's all we want. See, they're getting movement, Jerry. We're not getting it. I feel the fucking worst here, Jerry. Look at that. Look at this camera there. He's dragged in the fucking Kodongo comes out. Yeah! Trigger! Trigger! What did I see there? Just put him in and tap it up. Oh, fuck it here. What a fucking charge. Three! Three! Get involved! Oh, 
a fucking save. You know what I'm going to say right here now? They're one fucking thing getting us trouble. And we know, I know where it's gone all the time. It's gone right to the fucking far post. There, there, there. Right back here. Yeah. There, right back fucking here. thing. There where it's gone all the fucking time. And there have been three fucking free headers in there. They've got us. You can see them again, guys. We're going to start the game fucking right. Nice. Danny, see the kicker? Yeah. You've had the ball. Ah, oh, well, look, Jerry, they're fucking right on it. They know it's fucking right, okay, Danny. Danny, you've pinned it back. Yeah, it's bounced up. Yeah, lads, we're fucking one now. We're closer to you. We're fucking encouraging each other in. We're closer to you. I can't go and fucking learn the ball. It's coming to half a mile an hour. Let's just concentrate what we're going to do. The slackness in the first place when they do it fucking used it. Gaffer, to be fair to them. Gaffer, to be fair to them. They were running it like a gun. Oh, well, Let's talk about what we're going to do. We can't do fuck all about that. Let's be fucking oh, positive. <laughs> fuck. I am going to go and fucking play. Oh, no, no, we we need. Need. Well, we don't need to talk. You know what's required. Come on. Work your balls off up front. That's all we ask of you. If you're fucking tired, we'll get somebody else on. But work your balls off. Come on! Come on, let's go and do it. Come on, boy. Come on, let's go. Right, come on, let's go. We don't want any stupid bookings. We've already had stupid things. Fuck's sake, good recovery, good recovery. From the start, Thistle are dominant. The players rediscover the form that brought them from nowhere to title contenders. They start to turn on the style. How do you know how long he's been? How do you know? Three over, how do you know? Three over. Two goals up and only seconds between Thistle and the First Division Championship. The press snappers and TV crews are steadying themselves, ready to pounce at the final whistle. five or six, but uh, we always wanted to win it in our own steam and it's absolutely brilliant. Feel for these punters, absolutely superb. Unbelievable. You couldn't, we couldn't envisage when we come back here that we're back to the Premier League. He loves you, baby. Take all of you. Couldn't believe it. It's a dream come true. Is that the longest second half you've ever had? No, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it should have been four or five nothing, actually. I thought we let them off the hook. I thought if you'd have buried them with four or five nothing, it would have been injustice. <laughs> Super. Brilliant, obviously. Um, it's just great, especially when we, we never expected it this season to finally come to this stage and win the league and win it the way we did. Uh, we didn't have to rely on energy. Losing, we went and won it ourselves, it's always the best way to do it. So. And uh, one more thing that we've got to say is, Monkey! <laughs> 
Cheers, girl. Thanks. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. 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 I thought we were fucking were great today. We tore them apart today. So I see the chances we created. Unbelievable, especially the second half. But I mean, I feel it's just because at the end of the day that they get that wee bit, the wee bit rest that they need it. And I said that you heard me afford the game. Come on, Jim. You heard me afford the game. Uh, at the end of the day. Just saying to the players that there are no excuses today because you've been rested. We're known cup ties now, you've had two weeks, so. And I mean, they responded today. I'm delighted for the players and the fans and everybody concerned with the club, considering three and a half years where they were down out. This is, this is what these supporters deserve. Uh, and everybody with the club, I mean... I'm, 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 yeah, you can. Well done, well mister. <laughs> this is my ex-chairman, you know. <laughs> Great. What a yeah, job he's done. Has he done a job or what, eh? Ah, well. Second yeah. division, first division, Sharp, Premier right. League, here we come. Huh? Miracles, Jim. No pain. No, 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 you're, Remember right. no, you're right there, but at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> that's worth that's worth its weight in gold to me today. Worth its weight in gold. He's done a fantastic job. Um, manager of the year without a doubt. A few beers back at Fir Hill for the team and directors allows an opportunity to reflect on a remarkable season and how the supporters kept the club alive. <laughs> the sports have been absolutely fantastic in this club. I mean, they've, they've stuck with us through thick and thin. I mean, it's four and a half years ago we played St Mirren, quite ironic, and it might have been our last game. And, you know, thousands of them turned out, far more than we thought, and that kept the club going and gave the Bank of Scotland confidence. And now here we are, a game against St Mirren, four and a half years later, and it's back to the SPL. It's just, just phenomenal. Uh, I must be honest with you and say that a year ago I didn't think this was possible. He's really quite a shy person and he's, he's not somebody who likes the limelight really as you know as you'll possibly realise that you know that he was you know he's, he had to go back into the dressing room and get him out in the park and get him out to meet the fans and get him and Jerry and you know, we, got, we got him out and we got him meeting the fans but he's not a he's not a showman he's not somebody who wants to be in there. He, I mean, as far as John's concerned the players did this and the players were the people and he wanted the players to get the limelight and that's the way the man is. Follow Thistle, follow Partick Thistle, there's not a team like the Fair Hill Jags. By the way, we don't fear anyone, any time, night or day. So fly the flag, keep it flying high and follow us everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Before I go, lads, I'd just like to say you have been absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The professionalism has been brilliant. The harmony has been brilliant. And I can only thank you for everything you've done. The kit men have been fucking hopeless, by the way. Sometimes they don't turn up in fucking time. But they always get in it with a part. Anyway, thanks for everything, guys. Today is as much a day for the supporters as it is for the players. They've not had uh, too many opportunities to go out and celebrate over the last few years, and uh, today is, is very much for them. The day we didn't know if NB was coming down, and I would say about an hour ago, I phoned up 
one of the players, you know, that I know, and he says, we're, we're making my way down Mary Hill. And I've said this in the past, can you picture Rangers coming down Govan Road or uh, uh, Celtic players coming down Parkhead and that, no, uh, Gallagate? They walked right down and then into every pub, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm delighted, I'm more than delighted. This is, they know, they know what, the, what the fans mean to them, you know. They do, you know, every one of them, every, every single one of them. Realistically, the playing budget is probably going to be in the region of a million pounds. Even at a million pounds, we're struggling badly. The target next year has to be break even and second bottom. That would be that would be your lottery ticket up. Come on, come on, man. come on, come on, then. come on. 